So I will try to make the point, uh, if possible, with some evidence when present on uh, endoscopic uh, and surgical therapy of chronic pancreatitis. These are my disclosures. So <clears throat> the main prob clinical problem in, in chronic pancreatitis we know is pain. And then there are complications that may occur during the natural history of chronic pancreatitis. But I, I won't speak about complications. We'll focus on, on treatment of pain. Uh, pain may be of, of obstructive origin or inflammatory origin. And both endoscopy and surgery are effective in obstructive. And endoscopy is much less effective in inflammatory origin. And surgery is still probably the, uh, the best option. So the origin of pain in chronic pancreatitis has uh, several uh, origin. Uh, parenchymal ischemia, the presence of pseudocyst, nerves entrapment, but very often the obstructive pain is due to uh, the presence of a stricture of the stone and a dilation of the main pancreatic duct and of the pancreatic tree is present. Uh, I think this is one of, of the most important uh, papers uh, um, on chronic pancreatitis, and it's a paper from a man of uh, more than 20 years ago. But he clearly defined two types of uh, uh, pain, type A and type B. Type A is the most common, is probably more than 80% of the patients. Type B is a minority. But type A is typically uh, uh, characterized by onset and remission of pain with pain-free intervals of uh, different uh, duration from several months, also years. While type B is uh, a permanent pain with some bouts that can uh, lead to hospitalization of the patient. Usually type A is more common in patients at the beginning of their natural history, so uh, chronic pancreatitis is not yet in a severe form. In type B is most common when a complication occurs, uh, occur like a pseudocyst, or when there is a stricture or an obstructive stone with a dilation, important dilation of the pancreatic duct. Of course, the aim of any treatment is to try to solve the pain. And in this cohort of patients uh, treatedly, uh, treated medically or with the surgery, in the, in, the, in, the, in the paper of a man, you see that there was not actually a very big difference between these two, uh, these two groups. But our aim is, of course, to abolish any pain. So to uh, understand which are the best uh, um, patients, the best candidates for um, a treatment, I think that the, the classification proposed by, by Michel Cremer several years ago is still very useful because uh, actually the best candidates with pain for surgery and for endoscopy are the type 4. Uh, the patients, patients that have uh, an obstructed duct uh, due to a stone or a stricture in the head of the pancreas. We must be very careful and not to treat the images of the patient but to treat patients Therefore, to uh, create, uh, to, to make a good candidate for, for, uh, for therapy, the patient must be symptomatic and the morphology should be at least moderate or severe. The two main features uh, dominating the morphology of chronic pancreatitis are the dominant structures on the main pancreatic duct and stones. Endoscopically, what can we do? We have listened a few minutes ago about the, 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 the potential use of ESWL for biliary stones, but in uh, treating chronic pancreatitis, ESWL is absolutely critical. At least 50%, 50 to 60% of the patients need uh, an ESWL in the course of the treatment of the endoscopic treatment for chronic pancreatitis. And this meta-analysis is quite old, 15 years ago, but you can see that the, the effect on the, on the clearance of the duct is extremely positive in all the papers published at that moment. 
The biggest series uh, published until now comes from Hyderabad, from the uh, Asian Institute of Gastroenterology. It was published last year uh, in pancreatology with more than 5,000 patients. Uh, I don't know, Nagi, how many patients do you perform a week? 50, 60 probably. It's impressive. And uh, what is interesting is that the, 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 the data um, compared to the previous uh, liter published literature are quite similar in terms of uh, uh, clearance, uh, around 70 to 75 percent, and pain relief, uh, about 80 percent. The follow-up, of course, in this series of 5,000 patients is a little bit shorter uh, than other paper. But uh, it's a huge experience confirming that uh, ESWL is quite useful. A few years ago, we reviewed uh, our um, uh, experience at the Gemelli Hospital, and um, there were uh, close to 350 patients with chronic pancreatitis undergoing ESWL. At that time, we were able to collect information and follow up only on half of them, and the follow up is going on in, uh, later on. But the complete pain relief, you see, uh, was uh, uh, obtained in uh, close to 60% together with endotherapy and not, not with, uh, with uh, ESWL alone. Uh, an improvement in one third and no pain relief at all in 12% uh, of the patients. So ESWL is uh, uh, very helpful in uh, uh, in uh, connection with endotherapy, with active endotherapy, but the question is, can ESWL be used alone without following uh, uh, ERCP? Uh, probably yes, if we select the patients that don't have a severe and uh, dominant stricture in the head of the pancreas, some patient could be treated only with ESWL. And we published a few years ago uh, together with a group of Brussels uh, uh, and Rome, this, this study, which, is and, uh, which was and remains the only randomized study comparing these two attitudes, ESWL alone or ESWL plus endotherapy. And you can see that the pain relapse was exactly the same at the two years uh, uh, interval. The follow-up was more than four years in all the patient. Uh, both uh, strategies were... Um, were useful in reducing the pain episode per year, but the hospital stay and the cost were significantly lower for ESWL. What does it mean? It means that probably a subgroup of patients, you can start doing, uh, treating them only with ESWL, and all, only those that are rec have recurrent pain or don't resolve the pain um, will undergo endotherapy. Uh, if ESWS fail, uh, there is another way today to uh, get rid of the, of the stones. And uh, this is the uh, laser or uh, electrohydraulic uh, lithotripsy under um, cholangioscopic, uh, under pancreatoscopic control, with, uh, in this case with the spyglass. The, the experience has been published last year by the group uh, here of Dusseldorf, by Christian Gerges. And um, there were 20 patients uh, with failed previous ESWL and uh, two with prior surgery. Uh, and the, um, this technique was quite uh, effective in, uh, in uh, um, breaking the stones under vision. Of course, the stone uh, must not be impacted in a, in a severe stricture, otherwise you cannot reach him. It, uh, but uh, in, in case you can reach the stone, this is a very elegant technique that uh, is successful almost always. Okay, so what about stricture? Stricture may be treated with stents. If you leave one plastic stent for six months, you get rid of uh, uh, pain in 30 to 50%. If you, less, if you leave a plastic stent for two years, a large bowl plastic stent, you get rid of the pain in 60 to 70% of the cases. We have shown some years ago that putting more stents can be, in, again, in a subgroup of patients with unrelenting pancreatic strictures after stenting with one stent, 
can be useful, and uh, we reported a success of 84%. And more recently, we have <coughs> uh, increased this, uh, this cohort at close to 50 patients with a very high structure resolution, showing that if you are more aggressive uh, with a follow-up also quite long, you might be uh, uh, more successful. Uh, on the contrary, the group of Brussels published last uh, few, few months ago this paper comparing three groups of patients, one stand, one or two stands, and two stands, and showing that not only there is no difference in terms of uh, success, but probably putting one stand is better. Uh, there are, of course, some, some uh, uh, discussion to, to make. Uh, I, I, I wrote a, a small editorial on this, on this paper. Uh, probably the difference is that uh, not all the patients need several stents. You can start with one stent, but those patients that have an unrelenting stricture that don't heal with one stent, then you can mm, try to improve the result by putting multiple stent. In our paper, the median number of stent was three and not two. Metal stents. Metal stents, we are still far away because uh, you need, of course, fully covered stent that can be removed, being uh, this uh, uh, benign, uh, benign pathology. Uh, this was uh, an experience that we published a few years ago with uh, a fully covered stent, which was quite effective, but also dangerous because one-fourth of the patients developed another stricture. So the stent solved the stricture for, for, for which it was placed, but it used another stricture that we had to, to treat with, uh, with plastic stents. So uh, there, is, there are other studies ongoing on, uh, on this kind of stents. Uh, endoscopy may treat also children. Uh, this is our experience published last year on 38 children with seven years of median follow-up. You see the pain severity and the pancreatitis episodes are both statistically significant after uh, treatment. But surgery. Surgery has a lot of options as well to, to treat uh, chronic pancreatitis. Decompression, resection, or combined procedures. And uh, as uh, endoscopy, surgery has to be tailored to the needs of patients and if possible, should be organ sparing. There are only two, two papers, two studies, comparing prospectively in a randomized way, uh, a endoscopic treatment and uh, surgery. One comes uh, from uh, uh, Czech Republic and the other one from the Netherlands. Uh, both are in favor of uh, surgical treatment, even with some bias in probably in both, in both studies, and some discussion can be done, but they are both in favor of surgery. There is another very recent published study last week in JAMA, also coming from, from the Netherlands for the Dutch Pancreatitis Study Group, where they compared the early surgery versus endoscopy as a first approach on pain in patients with chronic pancreatitis. However, early surgery is not for an early disease because all the, these patients were already under the use of opioids, which is already a, a stage not really initial of the disease. But again, uh, this study uh, showed a superiority of surgery. So what? We have to operate all the patients? Mm, probably not. If you look at the guidelines, this is the International uh, Association of Pancreatology, the European Club, this, but also the other guidelines suggest to start with endoscopy. So candidate for endoscopy for symptoms and appropriate morphologic features, trial of endotherapy. If endotherapy is not effective, then imagine surgery. The same for the Japanese Society of Gastroenterology. If you look at the symptoms <coughs> always medical conservative treatment and then endoscopic SWL before surgery, but also for complications, uh, a more conservative approach is suggested. And finally, also the, the European Society suggests that endoscopic therapy and uh, ESWL as the first-line therapy for painful and complicated chronic pancreatitis, 
but of course, in case of clinical uh, negative response, uh, it, uh, the patient has to be evaluated in a multidisciplinary uh, setting for uh, surgical options. So finally, I think that the, the chronic pancreatitis is the typical disease, uh, which is a spectrum disease, where you have to inform very well your patient, you have to reassure the patient, uh, answer to his questions, and probably try to establish together the better therapy for the single patient. Thank you very much for your attention.